Hi there, it's Mrs. Kellerman again. We're going to continue with chapter 11 and 12. So right now, um, all the kids in uh, room age 5 are getting to, to go to um, inclusion classes. And the first class that they were chosen to attend was music class. And there were a couple kids that made fun of some of the kids in room age 5 And uh, right now, Melody loves the music teacher, so we're going to see what happens next. The teacher went on, before I continue with the lesson, let's make a real inclusion experience. Perhaps our friends from room H5 would like to sit with the rest of us instead of being stuck in the back. Freddie heard that and took his chance. He put his chair into gear and zoomed to the front of that big room and shouted, I'm Freddie, I like music, I go fast. The class laughed. I can tell the difference between people making fun of us and people being nice to us. Freddie could too, so we joined in the laughter. Mrs. Lovelace looked momentarily startled and then went over to Freddie, shook his hand, and welcomed him to the class. She sat him right there in front next to a boy named Rodney. Rodney gave Freddie a high five, and the two of them grinned at each other. Okay, I had to admit, I was jealous. Mrs. Lovelace asked an aide to bring Gloria down front close to the piano. A girl named Elizabeth glanced at Gloria nervously, but she didn't move away when Gloria was real next to her. Elizabeth's best friend is a girl named Jessica. At recess, they sit together near the fence and share granola bars. I've always wondered what they whisper about. I also noticed that everything Elizabeth does, Jessica tries to outdo, like... If Elizabeth beats her running to the fence, Jessie insists they run again so she can win too. Or if Elizabeth gets a new book bag, Jessica will have a new one the next day. So when Elizabeth started talking to Gloria, who looked terrified, Jessica raised her hand and asked if one of the H5 kids could sit next to her. Maria might have trouble figuring out some stuff, but she's a real friendly person. I want to sit by the blue shirt girl. I want to sit by the blue shirt girl, she demanded. She stomped down to Jessica's seat and sat down next to her. Then she jumped back up and gave Jessica a hug, and then gave a hug to the kids sitting closest to Jessica. One kid stiffened up when she touched them, but I was surprised that none of them, but most of them, let her hug them. Molly and Claire, since they were standing, had no choice. Ooh, yuck, Claire whispered. Cooties, Molly whispered back. Mrs. Lovelace raised an eyebrow, then cleared her throat. <clears throat> Seems like you two like to stand. You'll continue to do so the rest of the week. Oh, man, this sucks, I heard Claire say. Molly had a sense enough to say nothing. Maria didn't notice. She, she even kissed Claire on the cheek. That was funny. Willie ended up next to a large, friendly boy named Connor. Ashley and Carl were absent that day, so that left me sitting in the back of the classroom by myself. The room got real quiet. I suddenly felt cold, like the air conditioning had been cranked up real high. I got goosebumps. The teacher looked around the room, expectation on her face, I guess hoping that somebody would volunteer to take me. At that moment, I would have given anything to be back in our bluebird room instead of sitting here with 30 kids staring at me. Finally, a girl got up out of her seat and walked over to my chair. She squatted down and looked me directly in the face. Then she smiled. It was the girl with the long hair who frowned at her friends for laughing. I'm Rose, she said, her voice soft. I smiled back and I tried really hard not to kick or grunt or make a noise that would scare her away. I held my breath and thought about calm, quiet things like ocean waves. It worked. I inhaled deeply and slowly, then pointed to my board to thank you. Rose seemed to understand. I showed her I could power my own chair, and I rolled to where she'd been sitting. We sat together for the rest of that class, and I didn't even do a single embarrassing thing. It ended way too soon. But ever since, every Wednesday, our little class of outcasts get to join Mrs. Lovelace's music class. It's awesome. Jill, Ashley, and Carl eventually became part of the group. Each one of us had been assigned a buddy to sit next to and, inter and interact with. Once they all met her, all the girls rushed to Ashley's buddy. I think it's like playing with a pretty little doll for the first time, but Ashley seems to like the attention. Claire and Molly eventually got their chairs returned, but they haven't chosen to be buddies for anybody yet. That's fine with me. Elizabeth and Jessica have stuck with Gloria and Maria. Jill sits contentedly next to a girl named Astor Chang. Rodney actually comes over at recess and talks to Freddie. Sometimes he pushes Freddie real fast in his chair. Freddie loves that. And I get to sit with Rose every single Wednesday. On Tuesday, I can barely sleep because I'm so excited. I make my mother pick out my nicest clothes on Wednesday morning, cool outfits like the other kids wear. I screech at her until she gets just the right combination. I make sure she brushes my teeth so my breath won't stink. I think about Rose all the time. I worry that she'll change her mind and not like me. But Rose talks to me like I understand, and she tries to figure out what I'm saying as well. One day, I pointed to new and shoes and nice on my communication board and then down to her feet to let her know that I had noticed she got new sneakers and that I liked them. At first, she seemed surprised that I could do this, especially since it sometimes takes me a long time to make my thoughts make sense using my board. One day, I pointed to music and bad and stinky. Then I started laughing. Rose didn't get it at first, so I pointed to the words again and pointed to Mrs. Lovelace, who was playing some kind of jazz music on the CD player. I'm like, Mom, not a big jazz fan. It confuses me 
because it doesn't have a tune. Rose finally figured it out and said, oh, you don't like jazz? Me neither. We both laughed so hard Mrs. Lovelace had to put her finger to her lips to tell us to hush. Never in my life have I had a teacher tell me to be quiet because I was talking to somebody else in class. It was the best feeling in the world. I like the rest of the kids. I felt like the rest of the kids. Rose tells me secrets sometimes. I know she bites her fingernails and she hates milk. She goes to church every Sunday but falls asleep until it's over. Me too. She has a younger sister just like I do. She even likes country music. Sometimes she tells me about trips to the mall with her friends. It would be so tight to be able to do that. Chapter 12. By the end of October, the inclusion program has been expanded. Maria and Jill have been added to art and gym classes, and Freddie and Willie go to science. Me? It's the first time I've ever gotten to change classes for different subjects in my life. Now, when the bell rings, instead of wondering what's happening out there in the halls, I'm out there too. It's awesome. I plow through the crowds in my electric chair like a power mower and thick grass. Sometimes kids wave or say, what's up? Every once in a while, someone will even talk to me in the next class. Cool. But inclusion doesn't mean I'm included in everything. I usually sit in the back of the room going crazy because I know the answers to things and can't tell anybody. What's the definition of the word dignity? One of my teachers asked a few, a few days ago. Of course I knew, so I raised my hand. But the teacher didn't notice the small movement I'm able to make. And even if she were to call on me, to what then? I can't very well yell out the answers. It's really frustrating. During parent conferences earlier this month, my parents came in to meet Mrs. Shannon and the other teachers. Instead of leaving me on my own in a corner somewhere, Mrs. Shannon pulled me into the circle of teachers who are involved in the inclusion program. She's so great. She patted the arm of my chair and smiled. This child's got some serious smarts. She's going to be our star in this program. I did my usual screeching and kicking. I think I would have kissed her if I could. That would have been pretty sloppy, I guess. Well, it's about time somebody recognizes what we've always known, my dad told Mrs. Shannon. We really appreciate the opportunity to let her show what she can do. Mom was especially pleased to find out I'd been assigned a mobility assistant, an aide of my own. Finally, Mom sighed, relief in her voice. We've been asking for this for years. Budget burst and paperwork, a system that runs on grits instead of good sense. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Shannon replied, shaking her head. I'm trying to get all the students in H5 the services they need, but I, but I smacked an aide for Melody way up on the top of my list. So we'll see how it goes. I'm expecting a wonderful school year. So cool, I tapped on my board. An aide, wow, this person's job would be to take me to classes, sit with me, and help me participate. I wonder what she'd look like, or maybe I'd get a guy. Would he be young and cute, or old and grumpy? The very next day, my new aide was at school before I was, chatting with Mrs. Shannon in room H5 as we kids were wheeled in. She came right over to me, took my hand. Hi, Melody, I'm glad to meet you. My name is Catherine. I go to the university. I'm going to be your, deal, your deals and wheels every day. She talked to me like I was just like any other student, not a kid in a wheelchair. I tried not to kick, but it was hard to hold in my excitement. Cute t-shirt, she said as she checked out Tweety Bird on the front of the new lavender top mom had bought for me. I pointed to thanks on my board. What's your favorite color, she asked then. I pointed to purple, but then quickly slipped my thumb over to green. I grinned at her. You're a quick, Melody. I can see we both like weird colors. We're going to get along just fine. Catherine was dressed in purple tennis shoes, green tights, a purple suede uh, skirt, and the ugliest green sweater I've ever seen. I wanted to tease her about her outfit. But I didn't want to think I was mean. After all, I just met her. I searched all over my board for a way to jokingly make fun of her clothes, but I couldn't think of a way to do it, so I gave up. It is so hard to say stuff. So now it's Catherine who helps me at lunch so I don't make a mess, and Catherine who reads out the answers I point to on my board. She'd added some more words and phrases to it, and she's helped Mrs. Shannon order the books I need to read. She even makes sure the headphones don't fall off my ears. The regular fifth grade language arts teacher, Miss Gordon, is not much older than Catherine. She almost explodes with energy and makes books seem like live action plays. She jumps up on the table. Sometimes she sings. She lets the class act out parts of stories, and sometimes she even turns books into games. Vocabulary bingo, Mrs. Gordon announced one morning. Donuts to the winning team. As they played, my classmates broke their necks to get the right definition, screamed out answers, and groaned when they messed up. In just half an hour, every student in the room knew all 20 vocabulary words. Miss Gordon gave donuts to the losing team, too, but the winners got the ones with the chocolate sprinkles. I knew all of the definitions, but the other kids moved too fast for me. Chocolate would have made my, a mess of my clothes anyway. One unusually warm day this week, Miss Gordon brought in fans and spray bottles of water and let us eat popsicles in class. Orange ones, of course, in honor of Halloween, while she read poems about pumpkins and ghosts. Catherine held my popsicle for me with a paper towel under my chin. I didn't spill one drop. Miss Gordon does other cool things, too, like when she decided the class would read the story of Anne Frank, 
She had kids take turns squeezing into a small space she had built under a table so they could understand how Anne might have felt. I couldn't do that, but 